Mila Kunis is a unique actress. Almost everyone knows her, but few can tell what movies with her participation have watched over the past few years. And recently, there were only a few roles in her filmography, and even then, they all passed the viewer's attention. And now Mila is doing just anything, charity, cryptocurrency, all sorts of projects, and hundreds of interviews, but to please fans with her new films. The actress is in no hurry. Today, we want to understand what happened to the actress's career and whether her return to the big screen is possible soon. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to Cinemesh to stay informed about our latest videos before you dive into today's episode. Mila Kunis, born and spent her early years in Ukraine with her parents and brother, moved to the United States with her family at the age of seven. Her parents sacrificed their careers and financial stability to provide a better life for their children. Arriving with limited resources, they started anew in the United States. Her father enrolled her in acting classes at the Beverly Hills Studios, where her first audition landed her a commercial for Barbie. By 1994, Mila had her acting debut on the daytime soap opera Days of Our Lives. Little did she know that it would be the beginning of a successful acting career. Over the next four years, Mila Kunis appeared in various television shows such as Hudson Street, Baywatch, Unhappily Ever After, Walker, Texas Ranger, and Seventh Heaven. Desiring to participate in bigger productions, Kunis auditioned for the role of Jackie Burkhart on The 70s Show. However, it was clear that only 18-year-old could audition for the role. Kunis, who was only 14 then, didn't outright lie but she didn't reveal her true age either. When asked, she told the producers that she would be 18 in the near future. The producers eventually found out about her age, but Kunis had impressed them so much in her audition that they decided to hire her anyway. For the next eight seasons, fans watched Kunis' character, Jackie, grow on the screen. Mila Kunis was not the only actor to become a star on that 70s show. Other young actors, such as Denny Masterson, Laura Perpon, Wilmer Valderrama, Toffer Grace, and her future husband Ashton Kutcher also gained fame during the show's eight-season run. While working on that 70s show, Kunis also took on a role in a feature film, but in 1999 she joined another television sitcom, Family Guy created by Seth MacFarlane, where she replaced Lacey Chabert and became as well known as her role on that 70s show. Everyone knows her by this trademark, I wonder what he's dreaming about. Shut up, Meg. Mila was nominated for an Emmy Award for her voice acting of Meg in 2007. She also voiced Meg in the Family Guy video game. In the feature-length animated film Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. Amazingly, the actress still voices her character and will soon break the mark of 400 episodes. After an impressive career as a teenager, the transition to big movies took a lot of work. First, there was American Psycho 2, All-American Girl, released on video and received very low ratings from the audience, but it was essentially Mila's first major role. But in general, after that, the actress appeared either in significant roles in movies that no one watched or starred in episodic roles in TV series. This continued for about five years until she was called up for a major role in a relatively big boot camp project. 14 million project about a group of teenagers who were sent to a boot camp on the island of Fiji did not please the audience so much that the picture was able to collect a worldwide box office of just $150,000. After a series of failures, some young actresses ended their careers, but Mila was lucky. She was saved by Max Payne. The role might not have been there, but her Russian accent came in handy. Actress Deborah Rombot was also up for the part of Mona Sachs. Her Russian accent impressed casting, but the role went to Mila Kunis. The movie was not a box office hit, and fans of the video game were not thrilled with its adaptation, resulting in a mediocre outcome. As a result, the creators decided not to release a sequel. However, playing alongside rising Hollywood star Mark Wahlberg in the film brought attention to Mila. From all of Hollywood studios, 
She was immediately cast in the lead female role in the big-budget project The Book of Eli, a screenplay featured on the 2007 Blacklist, a list of the most liked and made scripts of the year. But in theaters, the $80 million film failed to reach $160 million and received mixed reviews from critics. But everything changed when the movie was released on DVD. The Book of Eli took the top spot on all three national home video market charts in its first week. In 2010, Black Swan, directed by Darren Aronofsky, was released, and after this film, Natalie Portman received her Oscar and became a category star. It was Natalie who recommended Mila to the director for the role of her rival. Darren quickly agreed and tried to prepare the actress for her role. Natalie Portman disclosed that the film director, Darren Aronofsky, used subtle tactics to create competition between her and Mila Kunis during filming. The goal was to increase the tension between their characters on screen. Aronofsky employed various strategies, including keeping the two actresses separated during filming. Additionally, he sent each of them intimidating text messages about the other's performance that day to create a sense of competition and rivalry. However, according to Kunis, this tactic backfired. The two actresses were already good friends before filming. This closeness caused them to respond to the director's efforts with congratulations and support for each other rather than fostering competition. The film became a grand success. Mila Kunis won the Saturn Award for Best Supporting Actress and the Venice Film Festival's Best Young Actress Award. And predictably, the studios sent a bunch of offers to Mila for new roles. She chose two similar roles in comedies that came out one after the other. Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake first starred together in Friends with Benefits and then again with her old friend Mark Wahlberg in Ted. Both films were extremely successful at the box office and propelled her career to new heights. Her image as a sexual companion could bring studios large amounts of money, but the actress chose to pursue dramatic roles, such as third person, blood ties, and the angriest man in Brooklyn. However, with a combined budget of over 70 million, these three films could only make about $6 million. Even Oz the Great and Powerful was not a grand success. As a result, Kunis had planned to return to her previous roles and was set to appear in the sequel to Ted. But Ashton Kutcher entered her life, and while pregnant, Kunis declined to work with Mark Wahlberg again. And immediately after the birth of a child, the actress was called to the most significant project in her career. Jupiter Ascending, which was released in 2015, was meant to be a comeback for the Wachowski duo. However, the film performed poorly at the box office, resulting in significant financial losses for Warner Bros. The film's reported budget of $176 million and additional marketing costs made it difficult for the film to be profitable. According to industry standards, a film's marketing budget is typically equal to its production budget. This means that the studio was already at a $300 million deficit even before a single ticket was sold. To break even, Warner Bros. would have to earn more than $500 million. However, they fell far short of that mark due to the film's poor performance. Mila revealed that the budget for the film was cut in half before production, which likely contributed to the film's failure. The original budget was twice as much, which would have allowed for more resources and opportunities to enhance the movie. Still, with the budget cut, the film was ultimately changed and could not live up to its potential. As a result, Kunis returned to comedic roles and had enormous success with the Bad Moms franchise while also pregnant during filming. This experience changed Kunis' perspective on her career, as she had never intended to pursue acting as a lifelong career. Kunis has chosen mostly dramatic and animated films for her roles in recent years, and her involvement in the film industry is decreasing. Instead, she has actively participated in various charitable projects, television shows, and promoting topics such as cryptocurrency and NFT. This year, that 90s show is returning. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis return for their one-scene cameo in that 90s show's pilot. It's revealed that they are raising their teenage son and getting remarried for the second time. And in general, there is a feeling that Mila's career is gradually ending. 
The actress is not motivated enough for breakthrough in her career, and from the role of young sexy girl friends, the actress has grown, and in dramatic roles, except for the Black Swan, she was not successful.